Good morning. We welcome you to another broadcast of the Church of the Living God, and we are so grateful that you've joined us on Facebook or on YouTube. And as we do each week, we encourage you to hit the share button on either platform so you can share it with your family and friends and uh, just get them on this broadcast because I know Number one, you're going to sense the anointing because the anointing is here already because we've gathered in that name that changes everything. The Bible says it's a name that's above every name. And it also says that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. See, coronavirus is going to bow. Now, we are on the other side of everything that's going on, so there's hope as far as the church opening pretty soon. Uh, way too late for my taste, but that's my opinion. But we are so glad that you are a part of this service. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to come into this house with the few people that's here and come into your house or your place of business and ask the Lord to have his way. Let's do that right now. Father, we do come in the name of Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. Father, we realize there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. And Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to flow in this house with the few of us that are here. But Father, all across this city and this state, this region, and yes, possibly around the world, we ask you for the anointing of God to go where people are listening to this broadcast. And Father, even now, I speak healing to their bodies. I speak peace to their minds. I speak the anointing into their place where they're at right now as they worship with us. And, Father, as they hear the word from the pastor, we ask you to have your way in this service. We'll give you glory for it because you deserve it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, go ahead, say it, amen, amen. In the book of Psalms, chapter 30, in verse 1, it says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. Thank God he's lifted us up today and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. Verse 2 says, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. If you need a healing right now, claim that healing in the name of Jesus. Verse 3 says, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. And verse 4 says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Are you a saint of God today? Thank God and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Verse five says, for his anger, watch this, for his anger endureth but for a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Aren't you thankful that we can have joy? Let's worship him in the name of Jesus. just begin to say hallelujah. Amen. 10,000 praises. We intend to bring to you this morning, Lord. All the honor, Lord, we intend to bring it and lay it at your feet. Glory, glory. Greatness with no boundaries. Awesomeness astounding. Loving knows no limits. Loving knows no limits. I light the master's shadows. Peace when I'm unraveled. 
in your place right now, right where you are. If you think God can't move in a lazy boy recliner, you're wrong. If you think God can't move in a car you're driving in down the road, you're wrong. Amen. He's here right now in these praises. He abides, he abides. Change us, Lord. Change us. We ask you to change circumstances, Lord, and change the things that we can't change. But, Lord, we also ask you, change our hearts today. Lord, pull us, draw us. God, we can't go inside our buildings, but we seek revival. We seek revival. Lord, we seek that nearness, that closeness to you. Oh, God, that we might hear your voice. That we might sense your moving. Oh God, that you might speak a word. Speak a word into the situation. Speak a word into our culture, Father God. I pray that we not ever be the same. Lord, that when things are normal, that it would still not ever be the same again. Because we invite you. We invite you to move. Move and breathe and speak, oh God. ask you for miracles. God, we believe that you are the God who still does miracles. You still can reach down and touch a heart. And change it, Lord. Change us, oh God. Amen. I believe it was Isaiah, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that went into the temple in the year that King Uzziah died. It was not a good time in the culture. It was not a good time in the kingdom at that moment. And he went there, as he had done so many times before. And he said, I don't know what was different. I don't know if the death of the king had brought such an oppression and such a heaviness that people had begun to seek God more. But he said, I went there and I saw the Lord. I saw him. And he was not down in mourning, but he was high and he was exalted. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Amen? And see, God is here. But he's up a little higher than where we are today. And all we have to do is see him. We have to see him. I sense him. I sense him. God, we want to see you. We want to see your hand moving. We want to hear your voice speaking, oh God. We draw our hearts near. We draw near. Oh, we worship you. Show us. Show us. Sing the song of the Lord. Still seated on the throne. Seated on the throne. He was close.
So safe. So safe. We bless you. You know, you can feel safe when you're all alone. You can feel safe when you're in a, a small group because he's there. And you know, through this whole pandemic, we've heard the, the phrase shelter in place. Can I tell you, there's no greater place to shelter than in the arms of God yes. tonight and today and tomorrow and tomorrow night. He's right there where you're at, friend, and he loves you. He loves you. See, it's important to me that he loves me, but can I tell you, he loves you. And he wants you to be free, and he wants you to be healed, and he wants you to realize that you're not alone. Right now, you can call on him. And, you know, we as as believers make it so difficult for people to come to Jesus. Well, you have to do it this way and you have to do it this way. Can I tell you that if you believe that Jesus Christ came to this earth and he died on the cross, shed his blood to wash you from your sins and he rose again, you can be saved. Because all you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Come into my heart and be my Lord from now on. And he'll save you right where you're at. He'll save you right where you're at. And that's the reason we're here. That's the reason we're here in an empty building is so the Lord can minister to you. No, we're not the only one. Lord have mercy, no, but you're tuned in right now and you're tuned in at the right time because he loves you. And Father, right now I just speak salvation to those that are lost. To those that have been thinking about taking their life, I just speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. God, those that feel lonely, God, those that need need strength in their bodies and peace in their minds. I speak strength in their bodies and peace right now in their minds in the name of Jesus. You can shelter in the arms of God because he's here right now. He's right where you're at right now. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. He loves you. And God, I give you praise for what you're doing across this region. God, for your glory and the good of your people. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. He is in the place that you're at right now. And I trust, and let me talk to the home folk for just a minute. Sue LG folks, I trust that you're not taking his presence for granted. And that once we get to, together back in this place, we don't need normal. We don't need church as usual. We, I trust that this time that you've taken time to spend with him, I get the opportunity coming up Wednesday to, to preach on the Wednesday evening broadcast. It's every Wednesday at 7.30. We invite you to be a part of that. Pastor Matt was last week, and before that, uh, Pastor uh, or Brandon Thomas 
uh, our preaching assistant, he was the first one to do the 730 program. But this Wednesday night, I'm going to preach on a subject called Where the Rubber Meets the Road. And I, want, I invite you to be a part of that. But you know what? We may not get to that point because Jesus could come before Wednesday. And above everything else, you need to be ready for his return. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us and being a part. And please leave your comments in the spaces below on Facebook or on YouTube. We, we don't uh, overlook those. We don't take them for granted. We appreciate every comment that is made. And we appreciate those that continually pay their tithe and they give their offerings at Church of the Living God. And we've got three really good ways that you can pay tithe and give offerings and whatever you feel led to do. One of those ways is simply by doing it online. You can text Win City to 77977, and they'll have that video showing you a little bit more information. But all you have to do is Win City, W I N C I T Y, to 77977, and that will bring up a screen where you can put your name, your information in, how much you want to give. Or you can mail it to us, mail it to the church at 114 Franklin Avenue, Winchester 40391. And for you folks in Winchester, the reason I'm giving the zip code is. We believe God can speak to someone in Montana or in India or in England to give an offer. Amen. I used to, in church, I used to I'd get up and I'd tell folks, I'd say, now listen, if you're visiting with us, you're not under pressure to give. And, and I know correct me on that because I'm not supposed to uh, prohibit people that are visiting to give because, you see, giving is an act of worship. Because the Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So you can not only give online and mail it to the church every Monday. For right now, the church is open from 930 till 2 on Mondays only. Of course, pastors are here during the week. But on Monday, you can drop it by. Uh, you can call us, say, hey, we're coming. And we can come out under the canopy and uh, receive your tithe and offerings that way. Or you can come into the building. Sister Connie Curtis, she is here from 9, 930 until 2.30, or 9 to 2.30 to receive that. So in paying tithe and giving offerings, what you're doing is you're allowing the message to continue as it has continued. And Pastor Hall is going to come right now and give you a relevant word for your situation. God bless you as you enjoy the word today. Thank you, Mike. I tell you, the atmosphere of the Lord is in this house. And it's our heart and our prayer that he is in your house as well. Not just because God is omnipresent. But we, we've learned to just kind of cast uh, that rope, you know, into the waters and say, God, uh, we want you to intentionally come. And uh, not just in time of need, but God, come and bring your glory into this place and into our own lives. Amen. I'm so grateful that uh, in the hours that are so dark in the governments of the world and and all that has been going on, this is a major, major thing. This is one of the, the greatest, um, you know, tragedies as far as this disease uh, that we have seen in our lifetime. I'd, I'd seen a brief little thing in the newspaper that said that there were uh, now more Americans that had died from COVID-19 than who died in the Vietnam War. And so there, this is a war. And uh, the enemy is trying to win it, but God is going to win it. And uh, I'm grateful for that. We are so very grateful for the congregation. You all have been encouraging to us. You've remained um, also to be good givers and uh, sowing into the kingdom of God in this time. And I tell you, we just cannot, we don't have the words to say how much we appreciate what you've done in a season like this. And it has just been uh, an encouragement to our spirits. And I'll tell you this, God has not missed that. He has not missed what you have done. He knows what you have done. He knows what you have sown. And it's just, uh, it's, it's going to be, I believe we're going to see a reaping. I looked again as they were doing worship on Renew and Restore in Mission 2020. Uh, that we, we brought to the church as the New Year's Eve theme for the New Year 2020 uh, this year. And, uh, and my, how, how fitting it has been in so many ways. And even in a time like this, America needs a renewal. And, uh, and the citizens of this country, we need a restoration. 
And, you know, I want to speak to you for a moment that maybe you have been in church. Maybe you used to go. And something just happened. You just drifted away. Or, or, some, or maybe something happened. You know exactly what it was that caused you not to go back to church or, or that you moved away from the area, whatever that it is. But, but you know, God is waiting and he's watching. He is, he is a God that is ready to invite, you know, you to come back to the body of Christ. And we're that way as well. You know, sometimes people uh, are gone for a while and that's okay. You're always welcome here. And, uh, and we're always going to minister to you in any way that we can. But we're just grateful for your giving. We're grateful for the moments that we've had under the canopy as people were dropping off checks and, and was just stopped and talked for a while and everything. And it was so nice, you know. And so we're grateful for that. But we are really, really ready to get back in the full swing of things. And the thing that we've missed the most is you. And, uh, you know, God's been with us, and He has blessed us, and God's done great things. But we've missed you. You're our family. And uh, we're looking forward greatly to seeing you, to shake your hand, to hug your neck, and to thank God in all that has happened. And I don't say this proudly. I say this thankfully, that we did not have one uh, COVID-19 person from our own congregation the congregation was, was void of that. And uh, I don't know about you, but I was praying about that. And I'm sure many others were. And so God has proved himself again in, uh, in this hour. Um, didn't know I was going to say all that, but going into that, my message entitled today is The Proving Hours. The Proving Hours. In John 13, verse 1, it says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And again, the message title is The Proving Hours. Father, we thank you for the word of God, and we thank you for your generosity and for your kindness toward us and toward this congregation and even toward our city. Father, we are grateful and we humble ourselves before you. And God, as long as we've been in this thing, as long as we've come to this house and and churches before we came here, Father, we still need you. We still need you. And we need you to come and we need you to just stir us again. And we need you to walk with us. We need you to heal us. We need you, Lord. And I just pray for those that are sick that they will will be healed. I pray for those that are depressed, that that depression will be right now captured by the joy of the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's the good antibody to that depression. Amen. And so we just need to uh, just have that. Father, we just thank you for it. And thank you, God, for all of your goodness to us. And thank you for this congregation. I ask you, Lord, to bless them and bless them and bless them again for what they have done in this period of time. We give you praise in thy name. Amen. Amen. So in John 13, 1, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come. I just wanted you to see this right in John 13, verse 1. That Jesus knew the hour was come. He, he had come with a mission. He had come as a baby. He had grown. He had evangelized all of Israel and spoke out. He gave forgiveness to the sinners. And he rebuked, uh, you know, the uh, high and the mighty kind of people <laughs> that think they don't even need a Savior. But you know what? He gave the word of God and he carried uh, the kingdom of God everywhere that he went. And so here before the feast of the Passover and Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world. He knew that it was time to depart out of this world, was coming imminently upon him. But he also 
knew, of course, as he was departing out of this world, that he was coming into another world. Amen? And so he says that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. I want to tell you something. That's what he's going to do in your life. That's what he's going to do all the days of your life. He's going to love you until the end. Until you are brought into the kingdom of his Father. He's going to love you and he's going to be there. And you're going to be able to sense him. Sometimes people say, I just don't feel much from God. Well, why don't you tell him you want to feel more from him? Why don't you tell him, hey, God, I, I'm just asking you for a stirring. I'm just asking you uh, to bring a, a word in due season. I'm just asking you to encourage my spirit. And then keep on asking. Amen. That's what he, Jesus taught in faith. Ask. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Ask and keep on asking. And so that's what we do. And so Jesus knows that his hour, the hour that he came for, he knows that it is time for it. And so his proving hour has come. And so we saw what he had done. He loved his own that were in the world, and he loved them unto the end. And so we see that Jesus knew that his proving hour had come. In uh, John 13, verse 2, it says, And supper being ended, this was the last supper, And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And so we go from Jesus knowing that his proving hour was upon him. And now we see that the proving hour had revealed what was in the heart of Judas Iscariot. That this was in his heart. Supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. And so... Uh, what do you do when a voice comes into your being or into your spirit and it says you should do this and you should do that and you should do it this way and, and you know that those things are opposite of the kingdom of God and what God has uh, trained us and taught us and fathered us as we've grown up in Him in the realm of the Spirit. And so Judas, man, Judas was there with him. Judas saw the, the blind eye open. He saw the lame people walk. He saw the resurrection. You know, uh, of course, after Jesus was crucified and rose again, and that witness of Jesus' resurrection, and there were multitudes more that were resurrected as well. And so... Supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray Jesus. This was in his heart. I want you to know that God is able to cleanse a dark heart. And God is able to heal when we've made wrong decisions. The devil had put this in the heart of Judas Iscariot. And what he needed to do was to identify that. To say, wait a minute, devil. You're not the one I'm serving. You're not the one that I've been following over the last three and a half years. You're not the one uh, that God sent into Bethlehem and born of a virgin. You're not that one. And he could have defeated the devil and caused him to go packing and, and for the, send the devil out to go find somebody else that would cooperate with him. But Judas Iscariot, he decided. He decided that he was going to follow his heart. See, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot. He had listened to Jesus. He had been taught by Jesus. He had been called by Jesus. He had been put into place by Jesus. But, but there was something in his heart. There was something in his heart to betray Jesus. And he decided to follow his heart. And so many well-meaning people will tell you, hey, whatever you do in this world, just follow your heart. Well, you better make sure you're in the right heart. 
that you're in the heart of light, that you're not betrayed or even deceived into your life and, and that the enemy, the darkest being that ever was, would stepping in would try to destroy us as well. And so just because it's in your heart doesn't make it right. you got to weigh that out with the Word of God. Weigh that out with God's purpose and plan for you. Did you know the Bible said that it is not God's will that anyone should perish? It is not God's will for anyone to perish. God, God does not rejoice in the perishing of the lost. And it's not His will that anyone should perish. Some people say, well, oh no, I've been so mean, I've been so dark, I've done this, I've done that. God don't even love me, God doesn't like me. Listen, God paid for you. God paid for you and he, uh, He'll cleanse you white as snow. Praise God. He, he won't just make you a little cleaner. He'll, he'll cleanse you white as snow. Maybe it's in your heart, but let's get it out of it. Amen. Need some counseling? Come by, we'll help you. Amen. Get out of our heart the things that are not what God would have us to be or to do. It goes on in John chapter 13, verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. Now let's just take a moment there. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that's important. He knows the authority and the power that God had made for him. All these good things that God had put into his hands. And he knew that Jesus had come from God. That's very good. Isn't that awesome? And so Jesus, Jesus knew, of course, the will of the Father. And had he been confused, he might have messed it up. But he followed the word of the Father. And so Jesus knew that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he was come from God, and he, he went to God. And he riseth from supper. This is the last supper. In about three years, as they were in that upper room. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments. And Jesus took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Jesus, the Son of the living God, hallelujah, he rose up and he laid aside his outer garment and he took a towel and he girded himself with those inner garments, that towel. He poured water into a basin and he, he put that towel in that water and he began to wash the disciples' feet. Listen, it's just very momentarily that he is going to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is the same night in which he was betrayed. And so Jesus is washing the feet of his disciples. And, uh, and so uh, he said it, uh, he wiped them with the towel that he was girded with. So he was maneuvering there to get this work done and serving his disciples. Every leader should serve. Every leader. The kingdom of God is about service. Serving God, yes. Serving man, yes. Serving the, the purposes that God has put upon our lives. I'll tell you, he started young in my life, and I'll tell you that he doesn't say, okay, this is what I'm going to do and do it tomorrow. But this is a journey of a lifetime. Jesus spent relatively short years, but the impact that he made in the massive crowds and multiplying bread and fish and healing the sick and, and doing the miracles. He did enough that any culture should have determined that this man was more than a man. 
And so Jesus, he didn't, he didn't go the way of his emotions. He said, Father, if there's any other way, if there's any other way, then let this cup pass from me. But when he recognized that there was no other way than God's way, there was no other way but God's way. And so then he took the towel. Then I'm going to serve. Then I'm going to do what he has called for, for me to do. And so Jesus, he, the, we're talking about the proving hours. The message title, The Proving Hours. Jesus has, has done all of this, and he's begun to wash their feet and wipe them with the towel. He's following the heart of God. In verse 6 of John 13, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Are you going to wash my feet? He's not asking him to wash his feet. What he's really saying, hey, Jesus, you, you may think you're going to wash my feet, but you're not. You're not. And so he comes to Simon Peter, and Simon uh, Peter says to him, Lord, do you wash thou my feet? And Jesus answered and said, what I do, thou knowest not now. He said, you don't even know what I'm doing. You know what you see, you know what you hear, you know how you feel, but you don't even know what I'm doing. And so Peter says, hey, look, I'm not going to let you wash my feet. I'm not worthy. And Jesus answered and said, what I do thou, not, thou know, knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. He said, you're going to get this, Peter. You're going to get this. So you watch and see what God is doing. Watch and see many times we don't understand at the moment what God is doing, but we look back later and say, that's the reason. That's the reason God sent that wind of revival. Or that's the reason that that person prayed that way that night. Or that word was spoken in that due season. Amen. It's so good. And so we don't always know, but we have learned to trust. And Peter said in verse 8, said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. He said, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus said, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Well, there's Peter in the proving grounds trying to get it right. No, you're never going to wash my feet. That's what he said. And then he says, Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me. Well, here goes Simon Peter again. Simon Peter, Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Two minutes ago, he said, you're never going to wash my feet. And now he says, I wash my hands and my head and my feet also. He's just all over the spectrum, wasn't he? Bless his heart, but I'll tell you what. This man won multitudes of souls. This man kept his faith to his own martyrdom. This man is in heaven, and he is, we're going to see him. And uh, that's one of the characters I long to see, uh, just, uh, just to see this mighty man. And so uh, he says, Jesus says to him, he that is washed needeth not uh, save to wash his feet. But he is clean every whit, or we'd say every bit. And you are clean, but not all. Now, he's not saying you're partly clean and partly dirty. He's saying that you have been washed, you have been cleaned, but not everybody's clean. Because Judas Iscariot is still there. And his heart was not cleansed. And so... He just went on. Peter goes on and says, okay, just do all of this. Do nothing that first, then do it all. And Jesus said, listen, everybody is going to serve, but not everybody's going to make it. Not everybody's going to be clean. 
And so in verse 14, he said, If I then, your master, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. See, this is the purpose right here. Jesus comes out boldly and plainly. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. See, even in the kingdom, even the leadership are servants. We are servants of the kingdom of God. And we've taught for years, decades here, and that when we are in ministry, we are, we're serving. And so uh, we need to know that. What ministries that we have is what God brought into our lives. And so uh, he says, I just want you to serve. He's getting them ready. You know, their hour is coming. His hour is coming. He's getting them ready. He says, no, no, it's okay. You've washed your feet. You uh, also ought to wash one another's feet. Give them the common courtesy. Now, there's people that have foot washings, you know, and it's fine to do that. But remember that them washing their feet was cultural because they were dusty roads and that they were very dirty when they get in. Now, in in our time, I don't know, we don't really have a a specific way of receiving people that compares to this. But maybe perhaps if you went into a home and they said, well, won't you kick your shoes off and make yourself at home? And uh, that'd be a nice, you know, little gesture. Uh, you'd have to be very close to that person, wouldn't you, if you're going to kick your shoes off. Um, but, but then if they went over and they started wiping on your shoes and getting them clean and all of that to serve, it would be something similar. So it's not that they had never washed feet before, but, but Jesus was using this time to show them that service is the way of the kingdom. And we need to serve one another. People will serve God with all of their heart, but they won't serve the church. You know, there's needs that are lay, laying out there because people won't serve. And so we want to make sure that we serve while we have the time. Amen. And so Jesus said, if I then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, then you, I, I've served you, now you ought to wash one another's feet. Clearly. Boldly, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you that the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. And if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Amen. And so the kingdom way to serve one another is to just meet each other. As we come through the door, if we just hear the need, maybe somebody gives a prayer request, let's do something with it. Let's send some encouragement. Let's make a phone call. Let's do something that's going to help people out and serve one another. And that's what Jesus was serving them. Jesus is about to to leave and, and he wanted to get them the service within them that they needed to carry that on, but to do that in balance. And he goes on and he says, Verily I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. And again, I speak not of you all, because there's Judas up there. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. All right, so we see two of the three examples of the proving hour, the proving time. We see Jesus doing what his father had called him to do and willing to honor God, his father, to finish the mission. And then we have the heart of Judas Iscariot, uh, and we see Judas in the time in the upper room having his feet washed, but having in his heart the deception that he was going to betray Christ. And so he failed his proving hour. And uh, Peter, as much as he was all over the spectrum sometimes, he succeeded. He did succeed. 
because he served the body of Christ until God took him home. And so, in uh, verse 19, I've just about finished with you, okay? In verse 19, Jesus said, Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, that you may believe that I am he. So I'm going to give you a prophecy. I'm going to foretell the future so that when you hear this and see this, you're going to know that I am, I'm he. And my own, he says, yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Wow, look at that. He said, I'm going to tell you before it happens, but my own familiar friend that I trusted, he's going to betray me. He's going to turn his back on me. He lifted up his heel against me. So we're talking about proven, proving grounds in the kingdom of God, the proving hours. I love it when it's smooth sailing. I love it when things are just going just right. And it's been tough. I know you know that. It's, it's odd. It seems like we've been in a whole different world. But God has been faithful. God has been faithful. And he will continue to be faithful. Brother and sister, I want you to know that there's going to be many proving hours in the time that we spend our life on earth. But if you'll, if you'll hold to him, Amen. Hold to that unchanging hand. <laughs> Hold to that one who is able to help you through the season. To help you through. So that you can come out on the other side. Not only telling people I've had a test. But telling people I've got a testimony. <laughs> I've got a testimony. Amen. And what the enemy means for our harm, God means for our good. Amen. And so endure as we are enduring. And God is going to bring the victory. He is a God that is true. And He is a God that loves you. And He knows where we're at. Maybe this will do some things to just cause people to recalibrate just a little bit. As a matter of fact, I don't think you should wait for a nudging of the Holy Spirit. If, definitely, if you get a nudging of the Holy Spirit, you need to move on that. But just in the circumstances in our world, we must remind ourselves that this isn't just the United States. This thing is around the world. It is around the world. And I don't know if we'll ever know exactly how and when and all these things fell into place. But I know that God talked about times like this when the, when the end was coming near. I know people say, I don't want to hear that. I've heard it all my life. <laughs> it's okay. But that's, God has shown himself, hasn't he? Thank God. Have you been well through this? Thank God. Your children, your grandchildren, your mother, your grandmother, your fathers, aged people around you, whoever they are, are they well? Thank God. Thank God. And just let them know you just don't take it for granted. Father, we just pray that as this season begins to take a different turn, Lord, that we, we know that the time of us coming back together is is closer now than it has been. And we are strongly looking forward to the family gathering together again. And Lord, I pray for the people. I thank you for the sacrifice that you gave for us. I pray that you encourage people. I pray, Lord, that you would just give people the opportunity to smile and to speak a good word, a kind word, into the lives of others. 
And God, I pray for the congregation of this church and, and this region and around the world. we got friends around the world we pray for. And God, we just ask you to be with them and strengthen them. And God, that you, your miracles would begin to shine. And I pray for revival. I pray for a God-given revival in many, many places. And God, that you would just move among us and stir us and give us greater glory, greater power. Lord, let us run and not be weary. Let us walk and not faint. <laughs> Lord, as we're waiting upon the breakthrough of this time, and God, we thank you for it. Because we know that as sure as you are God, as sure as Jesus was proved, as sure as, uh, as uh, Peter had been proved, and of course, Judas had been proved. God, sometimes you prove us in this world, but you are faithful. And I just praise you, Lord. I ask you to bless this city with greater revival than any of us have ever seen in all of our lives. And God, then just take the region. We give you that praise in thy name. Amen. God bless you.